Hello and welcome to the Pup Mommy. You know, in the last month or so, I've read about, I want to say, four different posts from Facebook, from my Twitter feed, Instagram, of dog owners experiencing some really crushing grief due to losing their dog to something called bloat. Um, bloat is extremely serious. It's a medical, a medical surgical emergency that can kill your dog, literally. So this video is going to basically take you through what is bloat, how to recognize it, and also steps that you can take to prevent it. Now I've owned dogs for over 30 years and bloat is more commonly found in dogs that are deep chested. And it doesn't necessarily mean the ones who are giant dogs. I mean, it could be a greyhound, it could be a whippet, um, Irish Setter, Gordon Setter, German Shepherds, St. Bernards, Weimaraners, the deep-chested dogs, and I can also best describe them by saying they're dogs that are taller in height than they are in width. Now, bloat is when gas and air builds up in the abdomen of a dog. Uh, what happens then is that the abdomen, as it becomes more and more extended, it pressures some of the other organs within the dog. Sometimes it's the pancreas, for example, and other organs, and then as it pressures those organs, it constricts the blood flow to those organs and to the heart. Also, what you're seeing is that's where the gastric torsion occurs, where the stomach turns on itself. And when some of this happens, this ha can happen rather quickly, and also what happens is the dog goes into systemic shock and then ultimately collapses. Bloat is something that is extremely painful to a dog. And if you happen to see or suspect that something like this is happening to your dog, you immediately must get it to the vet because your dog basically can die on you. Depending on when you've noticed the symptoms, dog can die within an hour or two. That's how fast it happens. So what can cause bloat in dogs and how can you prevent it? Number one, a factor can be kibble. If you have kibble that is a high fat content and that fat content is in the first few ingredients on the back panel of your of the dog food bag that is a key indicator because your your proteins like your meat or your poultry or whatever should be among the first ingredients that you see number two do you feed your dog once a day or do you feed your dog twice a day or more? Because when you feed your dog once a day, the intake of food is much greater and that can contribute to possible bloating. Number three, is your dog a fast eater? Uh, is it also kind of a high-strung nervous dog? That can also contribute to bloating. And number four, of course, is the dog immediately after eating does a dog go outside, run around, or, you know, because, you know, moderate exercise or a little bit of exercise after a dog is through eating, I mean, mine go out, they go down the stairs, they lay on the deck, they, you know, maybe trot over to the fence, or they walk around the backyard. Otherwise, what I mostly do is I make sure that my dogs are inside the house and that they stay inside the house for a good hour, and then I let them out because when dogs have finished eating and then they start running around or jumping in the pool or you're playing a game of fetch and you know what, that can also contribute to bloat. Now, what are, how can you identify the symptoms of bloat? Well, if your dog is experiencing it, first of all, this, you're going to notice that the abdomen is becoming extended and expanded. It's going to be very harm, it's going to be very painful for the dog if you want to touch it. It's probably going to whine or cry out. The dog could be drooling, salivating. It's going to look overall miserable. Uh, it's going to be trying and retching and vomiting, and nothing is going to be coming out. These are some of the symptoms that you can expect when you see when some when bloat like this occurs. Now, what can you do to prevent it? Well, for one thing, you can feed it a better kibble a kibble that is high in meat protein, that is the first protein that you see, not the fat content, but the protein content. Um, I feed my dogs basically twice a day. Um, my shepherds are anywhere from about 80 pounds to 80, 85 pounds, 
they get a cup and a half of kibble every single day. I mean, a cup and a half, a cup and a half in the morning, a cup and a little over a cup and a half in the evening. With that, I feed wet canned dog food, about a third of a can, and then I also add water, a third to a half a cup of water on top of that, and I mix it together so that the food is basically floated. If you have a fast eater, what you can also do is get one of those little puzzle bowls that will slow down their intake of food and will slow down their eating. That can be a, another way to combat bloat or prevent it. And then finally, what I mentioned also is that after your dogs have finished eating, let them rest inside. Don't, you know, if, if you know that for one thing they're going to go out on a balcony or on a patio and you know that they're going to lay quietly, that's one thing. But you don't want them running around. <laughs> what happens if your dog does have bloat and you suspect it? Again, first thing that you do, you immediately call the vet, you let the vet know what's happening, and then you get that dog as best you can into the car and you immediately run to the vet. You don't wait to put on makeup. You don't make five phone calls. You, <laughs> you don't change clothes. You don't do anything because, again, depending on the seriousness and when you first notice the bloat, your dog can be dead literally in an hour. Now, when you get to the vet, the vet is immediately going to take steps to work on, you know, getting the dog out of shock if the dog is experiencing that. Then the vet is going to be doing surgery. Keep in mind with all of this that it doesn't necessarily mean if your dog, that you, just because the vet is doing surgery on your dog, that your dog actually is going to survive the surgery. I mean, up front, it is an extremely serious condition, and I have heard of, of dogs dying on the operating table because the vet cannot save them. And then, you, and then also be aware, too, that this kind of surgery is going to be thousands of dollars. So you've got to be prepared for it if something like this, God forbid, happens to you. But also, it's, it's in a way, it's even more impetus to make sure that we're taking care of our pets and we're ensuring that, you know, we're feeding them properly, we're giving them the right amount of rest, and we're taking care of them. Can bloat affect other dogs other than deep-chested? Yes, not as common, though. So... I'm going to leave a link also um, at the, in the description section to Dr. Andrew Jones. Uh, he has a YouTube channel called Veterinary Secrets. Um, he's an excellent doctor and he also will be able to explain bloat far better than I can and really, you know, bring the, bring the subject home to you and totally indicate to you that it is a medical surgical emergency that is nothing to wait out or wait for the symptoms to pass. You just can't or you'll lose your dog. Literally, you will lose your dog. And on that happy note, I hope you found this somewhat informative. And um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Um, I'll also leave my contact information uh, so that you, if you have something that you want to talk to me one-on-one -on -one about, uh, feel free um, to contact me. Other than that, please like and subscribe, and I will see you for the next video on hopefully a happier subject. Thank you and bye for now.